Hello, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the main types of breast cancer. Before I go on, I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out new content, so there's always something new to watch. Often we'll make a video because you have requested that in the comments. So this is an invitation. If you have a topic not already on our channel, just put it in the comments below and we'll make a video just as soon as possible. I'd also love to invite you to go to yerba.com to get your personalized report. Your yerba report is created by taking your medical records after you give us permission to access them, cross-referencing it with the latest medical evidence, and then giving you a summary of everything that's been done so far in your behalf, everything that might be coming up, all the treatment options you might hear about going forward, and the pros and cons. It also helps you prepare for your visits. This doesn't replace your doctor visit, but it can help you prepare for them and also make sense of what you've heard in your appointment. It's so much information, isn't it, when you go in to see somebody? Isn't it nice to have it all written out for you in a jargon-free way? If you want to support our channel and you want your personalized report, go to yerba.com. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the three main categories of breast cancer. We have another video on the other subtypes of breast cancer. So I'm going to talk primarily about infiltrating ductal carcinoma, infiltrating lobular carcinoma, and mixed histology, where it's a little bit of ductal and a little bit of lobular. Infiltrating ductal carcinoma is the most common type of breast cancer. The cancer starts in the ducts of the breast, and it can take various forms that I'll talk about briefly in a moment, but these tumors tend to present as a lump. They tend to, even if it's not palpable, it's something we can see on imaging, and it tends to have a circumscribed shape. The cells stay together. There are subtypes of infiltrating ductal carcinoma, like tubular, like mucinous, most infiltrating ductal carcinoma is called infiltrating ductal carcinoma, not otherwise specified, meaning it's not a subtype, it's just the main type. If you ever see not otherwise specified in your pathology report, it's because it's sort of, this is gonna sound terrible, but run of the mill infiltrating ductal carcinoma. Let's talk next about infiltrating lobular carcinoma. Infiltrating lobular carcinoma is much less common. We see this in 10, 5 to 10% of breast cancers. These tumors are different because instead of the cells growing together and staying near one another, the cells actually are in single file. And so often, these cancers won't have a clear tumor size on physical exam, and they can also be difficult to see on imaging because the way we see things on imaging, like mammogram, is when cells are together, we need to see a billion cells or more. So as I mentioned, the cells in lobular cancer have the single filing profile, and that means that they're not a billion cells together. So it can be really tricky to feel or even see the edges of an infiltrating lobular cancer before surgery is done. An MRI can be useful in infiltrating lobular cancer, but even then it can be difficult to estimate the size till the time of surgery. Mixed histology, or infiltrating ductal carcinoma and lobular mixed together, is pretty uncommon. We see that in about 5% of tumors, and that's uh, one in 20 people. And these, in general, act more like infiltrating ductal carcinomas. They tend to be easier to see and easier to feel the edges of. We're not as likely to underestimate the extent of disease, although we can, especially in somebody with dense breasts or somebody who's younger. It can be difficult to see the true extent of disease on imaging, for example. These tumors are treated more like infiltrating ductal carcinomas. So now that I've mentioned treatment, what about the treatment for these types of cancer? Well, the things that are in common is that surgery is part of nearly everybody's treatment plan, unless the cancer has spread to other parts of the body, in which case surgery is a secondary concern and the disease in other parts of the body is our bigger concern. So we're gonna treat that disease throughout your system and then think about the breast later. But surgery for most people is part of the treatment plan. 
chemotherapy is offered to many people who have stage two breast cancer or higher and to about 50% of people with stage one cancer. Endocrine therapy, which is hormonal therapy that basically keeps estrogen from getting to any residual cancer cells, will be part of the treatment plan if the tumor is positive for hormone receptors. And by the way, uh, infiltrating lobular cancer is almost always hormone receptor positive. And then HER2 directed therapy or targeted therapy if the tumor is HER2 positive. Now this is much less common in infiltrating lobular cancer. It's really quite unusual in infiltrating lobular. And we see it in 15 to 20% of people whose tumors are infiltrating ductal. So you can see that some of these histology patterns, what they look like under the microscope, are associated with other features that are associated with treatment options. So a tumor that's hormone receptor negative and or HER2 positive, we're going to give chemotherapy. We don't see that as much in lobular cancer. We don't see ERPR negative. We don't see HER2 positive as often. So chemotherapy is not often as used. And when we say chemotherapy is often not used, it's because it either doesn't work as well or because somebody's prognosis is so good, we can't make their prognosis better with chemotherapy. The, uh, so that's systemic therapy, right? We do surgery, then we give systemic therapy, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, endocrine therapy, and radiation therapy is used regardless of the histologic type if there are indications for radiation therapy. And we have videos on who gets radiation therapy as well. So I've covered a bunch, and then of course there are those rarer types of tumors that we haven't talked about in this video, and we cover most of those on our channel, and if you have a rare type of tumor you haven't seen on our channel, drop us a comment and we'll make a video about that. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to go to yerba.com to get your personalized report and to support this channel. We'll see you next time, and thanks as always for watching.